Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. This is just going to be a quick one. Uh, we're just going to go through lens flares in post-processing. Um, this is a requested video. Somebody had spotted the painting that I've done uh, quite a while ago for my uh, channel banner and asked how we could get that kind of thing inside of Unreal. Uh, it's not too complicated, but I'm going to explain the system to you guys and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of it when we get to the end. Okay, so... It's all inside of the post-process volume. I'm going to delete this one so you can see now that this has gone away. Oh no, no lens flare. So what we'll do is, over in the left, we're going to search for post-process. Oopsie daisy. Post-process volume. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select the post-process volume. In search, we'll type unbound. And we'll set this to unbound. And the reason we're doing this is so that we don't have to be inside of this box to get the post-processing effects. Now it will happen anywhere without having to scale this up to the size of our level. Next thing inside of search, we're going to search for lens flare. And now we can see all the different options for lens flares. Now to activate these, all we have to do is turn intensity on. Click. And now we've got some intensity. Now, if we were to slide this up, you can see that these are going to get brighter and lower down. They're going to get darker. Okay, so in some instances, if you've got a really bright light, then you're going to want a more intense light. Um, but most of the time, you're just going to need them to be on, which is just a simple one. And then you get this nice transparent effect where they stack on top of each other really nicely. Okay, now, right now, this is fine because we've got a quite a white sun, so we've got quite a white lens flare. If we had a different color sun or a different color sky, you might need to change the color of the lens flares so we just tick tint and then we click on the color bar and then we have a little color picker and we can choose any color to make these um, lens flares change now obviously you're not going to be able to use black black is the absence of color um, so that's not going to show up at all with this um, but any other color in the spectrum will work obviously the darker the color the less you're going to see it but you wouldn't really use a dark color on a lens flare. It doesn't really make any sort of logical sense. Now, what if we wanted to make these a little bit more custom? Well, you can see over here on the right hand side, we've got tints and then array elements. And the reason these have got array elements is because each one of these shapes is an element inside of the array for the lens flare. If we click this to turn them on, then what we can do is we can individually change the color of each one. So you can see here, only the first one is changing color and we can use this to make some really cool effects um, like we could go for a rainbow so let's just quickly throw in some rainbowy colors in green move it into a nice little blue into a slightly darker blue up into a purple there we are and you can see we've got this nice rainbow lens flare instead now, depending on what your project needs uh, you might not want a rainbow I've just chose a rainbow because it shows it very nicely here it shows the way that the array elements work um, but there are some other things that we can change as well so over here we've got the uh, bokeh size um, what this does is allows us to change the shape uh, change the size of each of these little dots so you can see here if we make them larger they spread a little bit more they become less apparent because they're taking up more room um, it's just spreading the flare itself across more space so you get this very natural uh, distribution of light if you go all the way down to zero you're gonna get this really horrible effect here where everything just starts blending together upside down you see here we've got copies of the guy I just call him the guy I don't know what other people call him there he is um, so don't go to zero because obviously these things have got to have some uh, size next thing up is the threshold so what the threshold does is it changes um, the limits of brightness for how they affect the uh, the lens flow itself so you can notice if we go lower we get that little brighter bit in the middle and it might not be too apparent uh, where can we put this somewhere with a darker spot like here Okay. Oh, right. So, oops, wrong slider. So you can see here now we're getting this change in brightness. If you go all the way down to 0 0.1, then that brightness is going to be there all the time, regardless of whether or not you're actually facing a light. So we don't want that. Um, 
what this basically is doing is it's going to change the way things blur uh, based on the brightness of the lens flare. Now, the lower this uh, slider, the more things will blur. The more blurry they become, the more expensive it's going to become. So for optimizing reasons, you're going to want this number to be higher. Um, the higher the number, the better performance you're going to get out of it. Now, this isn't a very expensive thing anyway, uh, but when you start to add that on top of all the other effects, you might find that it does um, it does cost a little bit, but you can always track this through the profiler. The final thing we need to talk about is the bokeh shape. Now, what this does, we turn this on, and it allows us to plug a texture in. And what that will do is change these, uh, the little bokeh, uh, bokeh, rather, bokeh, uh, to a texture. So right now they're just hexagons, and we can choose the burst. And you can see they're little rings based on the texture. And we can actually plug any sort of texture in here, but obviously you're going to get some uh, really not not very nice results depending on what you choose. Uh, we can put this in here. We can uh, plug in something like the checker pattern. And you can see that it's actually recognizing the coloring a little bit. So if we turn off tints, so it's just the the basic white here, what it's going to do is use the colors from the texture itself the best that it can. So you can see we're kind of getting the red and the blue. Now what this is going to allow us to do is uh, create really cool effects uh, based on whether or not this light is only ever going to be seen uh, through specific items. So if you had a mask for through the top of trees or something, you can make sure that the lens flare is only ever going to be in the shape of the trees rather than just a, uh, a solid shaping. Um, similarly, this can work really nicely um, through something like stained glass windows. Um, stained glass windows will look really cool with this kind of thing going through because you'll get all the shape and colors uh, representing the stained glass window shapes that you've got on uh, in your scene. Hopefully, uh, that gives you guys a, a better understanding of lens flares and how to set these up. Um, Obviously, if you plug in uh, some different shapes, you can create some, like, you can have spiky stars to make them look really intense and then ramp the brightness up and change the colors of them, change the size to to better suit your needs. Um, hopefully, this gives you guys a better understanding. Some of you are going to be able to use this in your projects. Uh, some of you are already going to know about this. Um, but as I say, this was a requested video, and I thought I'd quickly get this one out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for you guys to use. So, I'll see you guys next time.